So where does the apex actually go on the nail? Is it in the middle? Is it back a little bit toward the cuticle? Is it toward this end? Do you really have to fill it? Do you have to change it? Do we need it? Let's get started. Looking for products to start doing nails? Visit nailcareer.com. Pro nail products available for everyone. So basically, let's first discuss what is it. The apex is a clump of acrylic or gel, whatever you're building your nail with, that has to be in a certain place to give it strength so it doesn't break. The longer the nail is, the longer the extension is, the longer the enhancement is, the bigger and wider that apex must be. So to get started, I'm going to build, I'm just gonna show with one nail, I'm just gonna build the nail, and then I'm gonna add the apex after to show you why it's so important. So bear with me while I build the base of this nail. So I have prepped this nail, I've just taken everything off and I have just prepped and primed this nail, ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a bit of a pinch. I like a nice pinched nail. So I am gonna put some acrylic on here and I'm gonna build it out with a foundation color, my foundation pink. I'm just doing like cover pink, anything like that, to show you where it is because often these colors are very muted and nude to match our skin tone, our nail tone. <laughs> And on that note, sometimes it's very hard to see. My natural nail, if I turn it sideways, has a slight curve. Some people's are flat, some people's even curve up a little bit. So this has a slight natural curve. I have a slight natural curve. This is the way my finger is shaped. It's not right or wrong, good or bad, doesn't matter. It's just the way it's shaped. I'm gonna do this one long so I can exaggerate well, actually, when we build them long, we do exaggerate that apex. So I'm going to do that so you can really see what we're talking about as far as apex go. Probably should speed through this part so we can just get this layer down. So I'm just going to do a normal butt on the flatter side so we can just get it down. I'm gonna build the free edge part as the thickness that it should be. Now we just have to let this dry. It's fast curing, so it should dry pretty quick. So I'm trying to show you the apex and I built it a little too high for this demonstration. So I'm gonna remove this a little bit with the e-file just to get rid of a little bit of that apex so I can really show you the apex. The idea was to make this nice and flat so there's no apex in it. But I'm so used to building apexes, I kinda added a little. So let's just take a little bit away. Okay, just take away that apex in there. I <laughs> just wanna keep that nice and no apex, okay. So see, if I turn it sideways, that's a pretty long nail for not much apex on there. Now, we don't wanna make them higher than they have to because we don't want thick, lumpy nails, but we have to have the apex at least at the base minimum of what it needs to be, and then you can go a little higher. That can come into style and taste, right? So let me do it in a different color. I'm gonna add the apex in a white color so you can really see where it's going. And I'm gonna actually keep the pink available because I'm gonna show you where the apex will go for this length of nail. So quite frankly, when you're looking at the nail from the upper camera, from this angle, this could be super thick and ugly or it could be really, really thin. You wouldn't really know if the apex is correct by looking down on it like that. But as soon as you turn it sideways, that gives you the information that you need. So we are going to add the apex. And I'm going to put the apex right there. That's where we want the apex to start. Sometimes if I feel I need to, I'll bring it right down to the side to totally make sure it's strong enough there. And then I can feather it 
off into the free edge and I can soften it on this end of it too. So I'm just feathering it this way and keeping it in that area. Now that is adding some apex to it. But I do need a bit more in here because this nail is longer. If this nail was about here or even here, we could leave that apex like that. But because this nail is longer, I need a longer, wider apex. Going to put that bead right there. See how it's a little bit further away this time? And I'm going to blend it. And because you're trying to make it as smooth as possible, you fade it off into the free edge and sort of blend that together. And as time goes, you will get better and better at doing this, so there's just less filing. But in the first little while, you'll make lots of lumps and bumps, and that's totally okay. When I was first teaching this, I used to call them turtles. <laughs> I still do, actually. Just make the lumpy, bumpy back of a turtle, and that's totally okay. See that? I'm actually focusing the thickness right in here. Okay, that's where you want, and we'll just feather this off here, but this is where you want the majority of it. And sometimes you can look at it sideways and think, did you get enough on the side? You can add a bead if you like. This isn't necessarily apex, but it is a part of that apex area. Now we may end up putting this in here and we may end up filing it away. You might think, oh, it's thick enough in there. Okay, you can see that's quite a little bump. Now I'm sort of examining this, making sure I've got all my beads in the right area before I start filing. And there's a little place here that might be fine, but because this is such a long nail, I really wanna make sure I reinforce that. So I'm gonna catch that now before I decide it's just too thin. So I'm placing a bead right there. That's at the stress point where the apex meets the free edge when it's still attached to the natural nail plate. That's the most common spot for breakage. So that's why I'm always really aware of that one spot. And if I'm going to add anything in there, that'll be the spot I'll do it just to reinforce that. We'll see how much we file away. Now I did exaggerate that bump a little bit so you can really, really see it, right? So that essentially is the apex. The apex is right in this situation here, right in this area here. You could look at these nails that I've already done. I've got, I extended the nail bed a little bit and then I started the French around here. Well, the apex is actually here. It kind of starts around here and it ends over here because this is so long. So the apex is in this area here. And if this nail was longer, I would put the apex a little bit higher and I would extend it a little bit further, which is what's happening here. So if I extended this nail, let's, let's just do it. If I decided to extend this nail, I'm gonna put a bead on the end just to have it that much longer. I'm just adding a little bit on the end, so I'm just extending it a little bit. Do you really need to add the apex? Probably not so much, because we have a fair bit toward that end. I'd probably be okay. But if I extend it that much further longer, I probably would add a little bit more just to extend it out a little bit. You don't want the end thicker. The only part that becomes thicker is the apex in this area here. And the longer the nail is, you might stretch out the apex a little bit longer, but not to the end of that nail because we don't want that to be a thick nail on the end. We wanna get it as thin as we can, but still be as strong as it can. Now I'm gonna ignore the white and the pink, just get that out of my mind and just shape it to exactly what I want and we'll see what's left between the pink and the white and how much of the apex we actually left there. Cause you're always filing some away, right? You're always filing it away to give the nice shape. Okay, 
so you can see exactly where I put the white. Now it looks like a fill. At first glance, you might just look at that and go, what is that? It looks like it needs a fill. That is the beginning of where the apex begins. That's where you want to start making it as it's climbing up the nail, making it a little bit thicker on all sides, not just the one little patch, but coming up from all sides uh, in that one area. And then you can see it's overflowing over top of here and it's thickest white in here. And then it fades along here. And even though I extended it with the pink, you can see that the white did not reach the end. In fact, it's faded off. It's almost like an ombre. It's just fading off into that pink because it's very thin there. I didn't need much of it there at all. Turn it sideways. Okay, so the white you can see is just focused on the apex area right here. It's strongest and focused right in here. I'm going to flip it over and look at that pinch. That's a serious pinch. I really went pinchy on that and coughing. So just turn it sideways. Now, again, it might be hard to tell, but let me put some gel polish on that. I'll be able to tell exactly if it's smooth or not. This will help us understand if this is smooth or not. And I'm choosing the black because I want it to be very contrasting color to my background. I'm going to show before and after picture so we can really see if this is smooth or not. Okay, let's take a look at those pictures. Okay, so with the black on it, you can totally see where the nail actually is. Look at that. All the way around, no lumps and bumps. It's perfect. That's exactly how we want to build it. And then if you look down and see the pinch, I created the shape without pinching tongs. I simply did it by shaping the form. I actually have a video to pinch or not to pinch. It really is the question. Check it out. Mm -hmm.